On July 14th, I completed Ironman 70.3 Muscleman. This was my sixth half Ironman and the race was actually on my 24th birthday. This honestly was the best 70.3 I've ever done, not only from a fitness standpoint, but just the course was absolutely beautiful. And it honestly was a bucket list race for me since 2022 and I'm really glad that I got to experience it. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my race recap. So going over how I did during the race, what my splits were, but also then a breakdown of the course itself. 70.3 Muscleman starting to get a lot more popular. I believe this is the first year that I was actually sold out. And it was recently just named the second best bike course in the North American region for Ironman 70.3. So I haven't seen a lot of videos done on Muscleman on YouTube. So I really want this video to be a guide for other people in the future. If you're looking to do Muscleman, I um, want to get another perspective for how someone else's experience went. And that's what we're going to tackle in today's video. This is Jules in the future. I forgot to mention that I did do a race weekend and race day video. So if you want to check that out before watching this, you kind of get a lot more visuals of what the days leading into the race looked like and what the actual race day itself looked like. So I highly suggest watching that video and then coming back to this one. I have my notes here because I just didn't want to miss anything. And I've gone over the past couple of days since the race, writing down just everything that I can remember. 70.3 Muslim is located in upstate New York in a little town called Geneva. This was honestly the best spectator course I have ever been to. The downtown of Geneva was right across the street from the Ironman Village. So it was really nice because especially while we were out on the bike, spectators could, didn't even have to get in their cars. They could literally just walk to the downtown plenty of coffee shops, plenty of spots for food, and then even spectating throughout the course, like at the swim, you could see your athletes start the swim. You could even see your athlete like 300 meters into it and then also come out and have time to get from the swim exit to bike out in time. And then for the run, it was a two loop course run. And so there were multiple opportunities to see an athlete within each loop. So it was a really great course for spectators. My whole family came out, my girlfriend came out, even my dogs came out, and they all said it was a great spectator course as well, and they've been to a couple of these races now. So for the days leading into the race, we left on Thursday to head up to Geneva. We ended up getting there around nine o'clock at night, and then Friday was the busiest day. Um, we woke up, me and Kaylin both had a lot to do for work, and I also, I handle NVDM's marketing, and so just getting the posts ready for the weekend, getting everything done that I had to do. So we woke up at around seven Friday morning, headed to a coffee shop and we were working at the coffee shop from like eight to 11. And then after that, I went and did an open water swim with Luke Hopkins. It was his first 70.3 and he absolutely crushed it. If you haven't watched his video already, definitely go do that. But we hit an open water swim. The water was really choppy while we were swimming. Um, it also smelled kind of weird, but we did our swim at this boathouse about a mile away from the swim start. Even though it was really choppy, I actually was feeling really, really good. I did a couple of swims a few days in a row. So I think everything was just feeling really efficient. I was feeling really fit and just really ready. And so I was really pleased about that during the shakeout swim. After the swim, went back and showered and then we headed to packet pickup. It's something important to note about this venue that I am going to mention again in my race day segment. The parking lot is a mile and a half from Ironman Village. And there's not really a lot of other places to park. Um, and so you really are gonna have to park in that parking lot on race day because other things were blocked off. And there is only one road to get into that parking lot. So we got there early enough. So I don't know if it was ever got backed up, um, but that is something to take into consideration. That's about a mile and a half walk to Ironman Village. But went to pack and pick up. It was so easy. Just walked in, walked out. It was crazy because at 70.3 Texas, we had to wait in literally like a 20 minute line. And so this was just really nice. No line, super fast, um, and just got what we needed to done at packet pickup. So we ended up staying at Ironman Village because me and Luke then did our shakeout bike together. Now the nice thing here is it was in a state park. And so there were actually run and bike paths there that everyone was doing their shakeout rides on. And it wasn't on the course, but it was right next to the course. So it kind of felt like you were doing your shakeout ride on it. And the roads were just so smooth. There was no wind, the temperature was perfect. And we were just 
having a really great time. And so the vibes were just really, really good. And I just, I had a really good feeling about this race, especially the shakeout swim went well, the shakeout ride went well, it was beautiful out. And so Friday really set the tone for the rest of the weekend. And then after that, we went back to McKenzie's and we actually hosted a few of the other MVDM athletes that were racing. So it was really nice to see everyone. We all hung out for the rest of the night. And then Friday night was the important night of sleep. Um, I always try to sleep in a little bit into Saturday morning because you don't get a lot of sleep the night before the race. And so that Friday night sleep is really important. So woke up Saturday morning around eight o'clock and it was another beautiful day in Geneva. Now the goal for Saturday was to fuel up and just rest and hydrate and get ready for Sunday. So woke up at eight. I was all out on my shakeout run by 8.30, 8.45. I had eaten three peaches before my shakeout run, some electrolytes and then some water. And so just like right from the get-go, not being depleted, just, you know, fueling up, getting ready. And then it was nice because Mackenzie's house was actually on part of the run course. And so I was able to do my shakeout run through that neighborhood, get a feel for the course. And my shakeout run was about 20 minutes. So after the shakeout run, we drove the bike course, the entire 56 mile bike course. This is also something that I do the day before every single half Ironman. It just it calms my anxiety, but then also actually helps me strategize a lot. And I haven't had to drive a bike course for 70.3 in a while because I did 70.3 Texas two years in a row. And that course is an out and back flat as a pancake. So it was really exciting to drive another course again. And now in hindsight, I'm so happy that I did it because it really helped me strategize for the bike for race day and helped me visualize where I was at. Um, and so we drove the entire bike course absolutely breathtaking. The roads were super smooth. It was a true rolling hills course. And it just, yeah, it made me feel a lot better doing it. Um, I remember when I was about to do my first half Ironman in 2021, I watched a YouTube video of someone saying that's what they do is they go and drive the bike course. And I thought it was brilliant. And so if you've never done that, I highly recommend doing it. And then after that, we did the bike drop off. My parents and my dogs got there, so we went out to eat, but then we were in bed by 8.30, and I actually got the best night of sleep I've ever gotten before a half Ironman. We got in bed at 8.30, I was asleep by 10, and then I only woke up once in the middle of the night, and then other, that, other than that, I woke up and it was race morning. Race day morning, I woke up at 3 a.m. It was 63 degrees out and 50% humidity. So literally perfect weather. As soon as I woke up, I drank 500 milligrams of sodium just to get the hydration going. And then for breakfast, I had a bagel with butter and honey. This is what I do every race morning and it sits really well with my stomach. And after I consumed all of that, I started sipping on 16 ounces of water to kind of balance out the sodium and carbs with just some plain water. I was really excited that was my birthday, but I felt really calm. I felt really in control all morning. Normally I wake up feeling really nervous, but this time around I didn't. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with, I was just so pumped to be doing this on my birthday, but also I've been doing this now for four years. This was my sixth half Ironman. So I think I just, I feel a lot more secure and I feel a lot more confident in myself as an athlete um, and then also just an individual. So yeah, I woke up not really that nervous, just really excited to tackle the day. Something that I mentioned was the parking lot for Ironman Village is actually a mile and a half away from the start. And so it's there's not a lot of other places to park, honestly, and race morning, a lot of places were blocked off by police. So you really did have to park in that parking lot. And so the parking lot opened at 4.30. So I told Caitlin, we are getting there at 4.30 because there was only one road that led into the parking lot. And so the last thing I wanted was for to get there and for the there to be a line into the parking lot and then knowing I had that mile and a half walk and then having to set up transition and having to get warmed up, the last thing you want on race day is to feel rushed. And so I saw that the parking lot opened 4.30, so I was like, we are getting there at 4.30. And so we left Mackenzie's around 4.15, got there at 4.30 and there were already three lines of cars there. Not, not leading into the parking lot, but in the parking lot, there were already three rows. Um, it was really quick to get in. There was no line yet, but people were definitely starting to fill in. So I felt a lot better that we got there when we did because then transition opened right at 5 a.m. So that 30 minute walk, um, it kind of served as a warm up, but then it was also nice because, you know, transition wasn't really open yet either. And so the whole morning just felt really controlled and calm. 
The hot topic of the weekend was if the race was going to be wetsuit legal or not. I personally am not someone who truly cares if it's wetsuit legal or not. I'm pretty comfortable wearing a wetsuit and not wearing a wetsuit. Of course, it's always nice to have the wetsuit because you're just buoyant and a lot more efficient. Um, but a lot of people were freaking out over it because it really was plus one minus one degree um, than 76 degrees. And so like two days before the race, it was 75 degrees. And then the day before the race, it was 77 degrees. So people were like, we don't think it's gonna be what's illegal. It's only going to get hot, hotter. But from my experience with Iron Man, they always pull some shit out of their pocket. And I kept saying to Caitlin, I was like, it's gonna be what's illegal. They're gonna do something where it's gonna be 76 degrees in the morning. And sure enough, while we were walking to transition, we got the notification that was what's illegal. And I was like, best birthday gift ever. So that was another thing that really just set the tone for the whole entire day and the vibes were just really good. The swim was a 1.2 mile swim in Seneca Lake. It was a two turn, one loop swim. And now my strategy for the swim was a little different than it's been in previous races. Some just like background information on what was going on. I did not get to do a lot of swimming in this block. I ended up being in the hospital about a month and a half before the race and they thought it was a heart related issue. So I had to wear a Holter monitor for about two weeks and that was two weeks of no swimming in the thick of the build. And so that hurt a little bit. And so I just knew I was gonna be a little slower during the swim. Um, I seated myself in the 35 to 37 um, minute slot because that's normally where I would be coming out at. But my strategy for the swim, like I said, was a little different. Instead of going out at 70.3 effort, I decided to hold back a little bit and just focus on swimming strong, smooth, and straight because I knew that if I could just be efficient, I would still have a really good swim. So with that being said, even though I placed myself in my normal group, 35 to 37 minutes, I was expecting to come out 39 to 40 minutes. Again, my whole entire thing was to keep this day super lighthearted. It was my birthday. This race was just for fun. So I was, I was just having a lot of fun race morning. And I think that really helped me because it's the first time ever for the swim where I hit the water and I didn't have a lot of anxiety. Like normally you hit the water in these races and it's kind of like, oh shit, I'm about to be here for a while. We're doing this thing. But I hit the water and I was as cool as a cucumber. My first thought was like, let's just get out to that first buoy. Cause that, that first hundred meters is like people who are either a lot faster or a lot slower. So you're all just trying to kind of gain your ground. And so I was just like, let's just stay smooth. Let's get to that first buoy. And so the first 500 meters of the swim was into the sun. From what I heard from other athletes who have done this race in the past, it sounds like they flipped the swim. So you used to swim clockwise and now the course was counterclockwise. So the sun was only in your face for the first like 500 meters, which was really nice, but you could still sight the buoys. It wasn't like blinding at all because it was also covered by some trees. So really the, the sun being in your face wasn't that much of an issue. And like I said, it was over pretty soon. Once I hit the first left turn, that 500 meter stretch, I feel like I saw no one. I, would, there, I, I did not see people swimming past me. My feet weren't getting touched. I wasn't getting kicked. It literally was a straight 500 meters of just open water, which was really, really nice because I was really able to lock in and get in a good flow. And then also the water was really calm. Um, it wasn't super choppy. The only wake that there was in the water was from the other swimmers themselves. And so this stretch was really, really smooth, really, really calm. And I got into a really good flow hung that last left and that's when things started getting a little chaotic again people are starting to speed up um you know you're starting to get back into iron man village and so i ended up having a pretty rough last 400 meters there were these two guys swimming in front of me who both could not swim straight and so they kept colliding into each other and they were just a little faster than me so i couldn't get around them but I was almost a little too fast to be like too far behind. And obviously I didn't want to slow down. I wanted to keep doing my thing, but they just kept crashing into each other and causing a wake. And so I swallowed a lot of water within these last 400 meters, but thankfully the, the swim was almost over. So I was just telling myself, let's just get to the finish. Um, you know, the last 200 meters is when I really started picking up the pace. Um, and then I got out of the water. I looked at my watch and I saw 37.42 and I was, over the moon. Like I said before, I thought I was gonna come out 39 to 40. So the fact 
that I came out, my official time was 38.03, but on my watch I saw 37.42 for just swimming smooth and like strong. Oh my gosh, I was so happy. My swim split ended up being eighth out of 22 in my age group. And when I looked at my Coros on the map, it looked like I swam straight, but then also it said I swam 2160 yards, which is a little over 1900 meters, which is 1.2 miles of swimming basically. So I swam straight and I was so excited about that because at 70.3 Texas in April, I swam 2,500 yards, which is a lot more than you should be swimming. So very happy about that. So I think the mix of really surprising myself at how much faster I was than I thought I was going to be, plus I did not expend a lot of energy during the swim, really set up the not only tone for the rest of the race, but just like physically how I was feeling. So we're out of the swim. I saw my dad, I saw my mom, I saw Caitlin out of the swim and it was into transition and time to head out on the bike. So based off of driving the bike course, I expected myself to be right around three hours. So just a little less, a little more. And so with that, I packed 275 grams of carbs for the bike and 3000 milligrams of sodium. And so that came out to about 90 grams of carbs per hour. I am so happy that I drove the bike course because genuinely this felt like the first time I was really able to have a strong strategy for the bike. And if I did not drive this bike course, I don't think I would have done as well as I did. So the first 10 miles of this bike course are a net incline. And so, but it doesn't really feel like it because there are some rollers and the roads are really smooth. But just knowing that that first 10 miles you are primarily hitting some false flats and a little bit of climbs. I averaged 18 and a half miles per hour for these first 10 miles. And it was really cool because we actually got to see some Amish and they were all on their horse and buggies and they were waving to us and cheering for us. And it was really cool. But I just knew that this first 10 miles, they were just a net uphill. And so it was only going to get faster for this next part. Miles 10 to 20 were fast as shit. You were in upstate New York countryside, the roads were beautiful, and it was actually a net downhill. Um, I felt like it was more flat, but when you look at the graph, we, more, we were primarily going downhill, and I averaged 21 miles per hour for this stretch. My top speed in this stretch of 10 miles was 34 miles per hour, and we were absolutely cruising. So now miles 20 through 28 were primarily flat, and you actually went out to one of the other Finger Lakes, and it was so beautiful, and it was so amazing because there were so many lake houses, and so many people actually outside of their lake houses cheering us on. And so normally you don't get a lot of spectators on the bike, but for this one, there were spectators almost at every single stretch. And it was really nice because one of my best friends, her mom's friend lives up there and they actually put out signs in front of their house for me for um, my, my 24th birthday, which was really, really sweet. But this stretch was just really nice. It felt like I was on autopilot the entire time because it was just on this highway, super smooth roads and really flat. But I knew what was about to come. The mile 28 hill. This really sucked, honestly. And it, uh, it, it was the start of a really low period mentally for me in the race. So you're ripping it down this highway. It's super flat, it's super fast. And then all of a sudden you go down this hill and you almost like have to come to a halt and make this right turn at mile 28 and you are just welcomed with this climb. It was a mile long climb and it was pretty steep. To put it in perspective, I was going nine miles per hour up the hill and I was passing people. And nobody really passed me. If anything, we all just ended up going the same speed. And someone said to me, like, we pulled up next to him. He looks at me and he's like, this hill is really fucking punchy. I was like, yeah, dude, it is. It kind of sucks and it's just gonna get worse. So at the top of the hill, there was of course a photographer and he took this really badass picture. Um, and you can see the elevation in the picture. You can literally see where we were at the ground level by the lake and then where we climbed to in only a mile's time. Miles 28 to 36 were the mentally the lowest point of the race for me because after that mile 28 hill there was no downhill you right away hit an aid station and then you actually 
kept on climbing. Um, it felt like a little more rollers, but you, I averaged 15 miles per hour for that entire stretch. And I just felt so, so low. Um, you know, I think during these races, a 70.3 is just short enough to where, you know, things can't get too brutal mentally, but it's also just long enough to tap into that dark side a little bit during a race. And I was definitely there, miles 28 to 36. And the only thing that kept me going and that kept me in more of a positive mindset was knowing that there was going to be a stretch, a flat road, and then even a net downhill for a really good stretch on the other side of this, which is also why I'm so happy I drove the bike course the day before because I was able to keep my spirits high and then also not completely fry myself on this stretch of climbing because in the grand scheme, it was only like eight miles. And once you got over that eight miles, you started hitting flat road again. So I'm sure there were people who were just completely gassing themselves out on these climbs. Whereas I took the approach of staying smooth and controlled, not letting my heart rate, heart rate spike too high, and then really putting money in the bank on those downhills and those flat roads. So that was really, driving that bike course really, I think made my race, to be honest. Miles 36 to 40 were very similar to my, the first 10 miles in the sense where when you look on the graph, it is a net incline, but it felt more like rollers. You felt like you caught a little bit more of a break. And that's when my spirits started to lighten up because I knew once we hit mile 40, it was either flat or downhill all the way to the finish. Miles 40 to 45 were entirely downhill and I averaged 22 miles per hour. My top speed here was 35 miles per hour. It was so fun and it almost felt like a breath of fresh air after that, after that stretch of like 10 miles of climbing. And then once you hit mile 45, um, you went down this really big hill and I ended up seeing one of my friends at mile 45 and it was this huge hill down to, to Seneca Lake and you made the sharp right turn and it was just flat all the way to the finish. Again, so many locals cheering at this point and you just knew that you were in the home stretch. I averaged 19 and a half miles per hour on this last 10 miles, 10 miles split from miles 45 to 56. My official time was three hours, three minutes and 15 seconds, which is just under an average of 18 and a half miles per hour. I had the eighth best bike split in my age group again out of 22 and it was my second best bike split ever my best bike split was at galveston in april which was a 257 but galveston when there was zero elevation it was completely flat so the fact that i was almost able to break sub three again but on a course with a decent amount of climbing just really shows gains in my fitness and i was Again, so, so happy about it. Now that I'm like going over it again, I'm like, now so happy about my swim. I was so happy about my bike. It just really was a great day. And then the bike was the most beautiful and scenic 70.3 ride I have ever done. It truly is one of the best bike courses in, in the North American region that I've done at least. Um, and so I think it was, it was nominated that and, and awarded that for a reason. So this bike course definitely made the whole entire race as well. It was absolutely beautiful. So now the run, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this was really the discipline where I had a goal and that goal was sub 1030 pace on the run. The thing about the run for me is it's never necessarily fitness, but it's also more I psych myself out, especially in the first 5K of the run. The first 5K of the run for anyone is until the finish, probably like one of the toughest stretches because you know, you're just getting off the bike, your legs are kind of feeling weird and you're also really excited, adrenaline's going, so your heart rate's gonna spike. And for me, that's where I get really overwhelmed. And so for this run, the first 5K, of this run, I told myself, you are not allowed to walk through any aid stations because that's what I'll do. I'll walk through the aid stations and then I mess myself up. So I told myself, this first 5K, you are not allowed to walk during these aid stations. You are pushing through and we're getting a rhythm going. And that really helped, honestly. That first 5K of this run was the smoothest 5K off the bike I've ever done. I did not look at my watch. I just was like, stay smooth 
and controlled and you know keep a really calm breath and my average pace for that first 5k was an 858 which i was really really happy about now this run course was a two loop course the first half of each loop was completely flat and then the back half the second half of the loop was rolling hills and there were two really punchy hills so once you hit mile three there was a ramp in the highway and it was a quarter of a mile long that you actually had to go up and so you went up this two times it was at mile three and it was at mile nine and a half miles three through six were rolling hills through a neighborhood um and like i said it was a two loop course so you were constantly seeing people which was really nice there were a good amount of spectators in the neighborhood but it was definitely challenging it was not easy rollers by any means because the hills were pretty decent hills um, but after that you either had flat road or you had a descent at mile five and a half you went back down that ramp which was really really nice and heading into that second loop mentally i just felt really clear because i knew what to expect and again i was able to strategize a little bit and so it really was those next three miles just locking in pace locking in effort and then when i got to the back half which was miles nine and a half to the finish it was really just about holding pace and staying strong i will say this the only time i did not feel good during the race was the run i got off the bike burping a lot and just feeling really full and i tried to take a gel and threw up in my mouth so i was like okay we're not doing that so i actually did not take in any fuel any calories until mile seven it was strictly water which normally would affect me but it actually seemed to have helped me so maybe i overfueled on the bike maybe i swallowed a lot of water i don't really know what it was but i just could not take down any fuel during this run but I mean, I felt fine, so I, I don't really know, but that was the only, that was one of the only little hiccups during the entire race, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. Like, I wasn't throwing up, I didn't feel sick. It was just something to note where I was like, I'm burping a lot, and I don't feel too, too good, but you know, it was manageable, and we kept going, but the only fuel that I actually took during this entire run was Coke, and I've never taken in Coke during a race before, and I took in um, Coke at starting at mile seven, and I was taking it every single aid station, and that was the only fuel I actually had during the entire 13 mile run, which I normally don't recommend, but that's what felt right in the moment for me. So with that, I also want to make a point and it got very hot that day. The heat index ended up being 101 degrees and the humidity ended up getting to 80%. So that run course, you were, you were hot, you were cooking. And it was for the first time ever, my arms started getting really dry during the run so every single aid station i was literally dumping water on my arms i was dumping water on my head and just the cold water on my arms and my head felt really good the entire time though and you can look at my splits on the iron man tracker i was so consistent and i felt awesome during this run this was the first 70.3 run where i felt really strong throughout the entire thing the only thing that went wrong was at mile 11 at the end of the last hill um, I rolled my ankle. I rolled my ankle and I actually tweaked my left glute and I started having glute spasms. And you know at like the end of these races, your body's like so fragile now. And so I was experiencing a lot of glute spasms. So I did miles 11 and 12, had to do a little more walking because every time I ran, it was really sharp pain. And so just that last split was an 11.55. But other than that, super super smooth super super strong and right on pace now for the really fun part i missed my 70.3 pr by a little under 90 seconds um coming I, I just based off of my times i didn't do a lot of the math during it because again the goal was not to pr this race it was just for fun when I hit mile 11, I kind of started to realize I was getting into that PR zone, which is why I was also a little bummed when I rolled my ankle. Um, but I felt it, I knew it. And then a half a mile from the finish, Caitlin found me and she looked at me and just yelled at me. She was like, book it, you better book it. And I knew what that meant. I knew I was close to my PR. And she just like followed me the entire way to the finish, just screaming at me. And I gave that last half a mile everything I had. I made that left into the finish. And I just, 
I what felt like booked it. I, I tried so hard and I even in that finish line, I thought I was gonna throw up. I started seeing like those weird stars. Um, I just really gave it, gave it my all that last half a mile because I knew, I knew what was happening. You know, I knew that I was coming close and I cross the finish line, I immediately start sobbing. It was a really emotional moment, you know? I, I didn't look to see what my time was yet, but I was just so proud of myself. And I was, I was so, so happy. I did a half Ironman on my birthday. Like how fucking cool is that? Um, I immediately started like having tears down my face and I turn around and I look at the timer and I see the finishing time. And I see that it is about 85 seconds from my 70.3 PR ever and I just start fucking sobbing but it wasn't it wasn't tears of sadness it was it was I think it was tears of just being proud of myself for the effort on the day and for you know I it also like racing on your birthday was a little intimidating because I wanted to do well you know I didn't want to do bad and then you know have like have that wreck my birthday I wanted to do well and so I think it was a overwhelming sense of emotion of just like being so proud of myself being so overwhelmed that I literally almost just PR'd and my whole entire family was there it was my birthday and I saw Caitlin and I just gave her a really big hug and both of us started crying she started crying too and it was just this really beautiful moment um that I'm gonna cherish forever and that was the race it's officially dark out but this light is like helping I'm checking the, the footage and it looks pretty good so um this was my favorite half Ironman I've ever done. Um, not only because everything honestly went perfect, but just the, the venue was phenomenal. It was amazing. The swim was amazing. The bike course was absolutely stunning. And the run was really great. Like that two loops, if one loop being like six and a half miles, it was perfect because you were with people all the time spectators all the time it was super entertaining you got a mixture of you know good flat stretches and then also some challenging hills some downhills it was overall a well-rounded course which I love and I think is really fun I hate the courses that are super boring so highly recommend doing muscle men if you can I really think it's going to get really popular in the upcoming years so you know if you made it to the end of this video I hope all this information was helpful you can drop a comment down below um, I posted a race recap of when I did 70.3 Augusta two years ago and I still get comments on it to this day of questions and all of that so no matter when you're watching this you know if you have any questions about the course please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. But I, I, I think this is a great course. It's a great course for beginners. It's a great course for experienced athletes who want to push themselves a little bit and also just a really great course to do on your 24th birthday bash. <laughs> I really hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and also subscribe because I'm going into the Chicago Marathon prep and I'm planning on doing an entire YouTube series leading into the race in October. And other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I appreciate all the support and the birthday love from the race. I'll see you guys soon.